My name is Paul. This is Pelican Painting. When I first uploaded these guys to Reddit, I had so many people messaging me just how I did this red glow, so I thought, why not start a YouTube channel? Perfect place to start. Hopefully, it'll be an interesting video to help a lot of people out there in the world. Okay, really simply, just to start off, you don't even need a small brush really. I mean, that's what, size 4? Hasn't got a sharp point at all, but it holds a lot of paint. So, first of all, base coat the model in lead belcher spray and then straight into the Cryptic Armor shade. I mean, straight out of the pot, nothing fancy, just slap it all over. We want to go on quite heavy with this really because we're going to do two coats, but we want it as dark as we can get it because the key to this colour scheme is all about it being as dark as possible and the biggest contrast to the airbrush lights. So, as I say, slap it all over the model. You don't have to be neat. If you get it on the gun, it doesn't matter. If you get it anywhere, really, because it's the very, very base layer. Everything's going over the top. So slap it on all over the model. Get yourself a nice brown base coat. After two coats of that cryptic armor shade, the model is really dark brown now. So we want to go even darker now. So we go with I'm using a bad and black here, but any black hole you want. I mean. Black is black, so slap over all the skeleton parts with black, just block them all in, paint them solid. I mean, two thin coats, as our Lord and Saviour always says, is the way forward. If you don't know who he is, if you stick around long enough for the community, I'm sure you'll find out soon enough. But as I say, yeah, black all over the skeleton, all over those hips, up the spine, anything really that's not an armor panel and not the gun. We'll come back to that later, but. All those skeleton areas, nice solid coat of black. And now you're gonna need a makeup brush. I think this one's an eyeshadow brush. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think I picked it from Pound Shop. It's nothing special, just a simple makeup brush, but those bristles are so much more fine on the normal paintbrush. And then if you've never dry brush before, using a lead belcher here, just work the paint into the bristles. And then we'll wipe the excess off. You see, I go back into the paint again, really load up that brush nicely with paint, and then get most of it off so there's hardly anything coming out onto that tissue paper. You can hardly notice it all. We've got extra light with this dry brush here because we're still trying to keep everything as dark as we possibly can. So just flick it over the raised surfaces as light as possible just to catch those edges. Don't want to turn it silver, I want to keep that black and brown effect just very slightly pick out the details with those edges. That's all it will need. Then we want to go back out again with that black. Once again, any black you've got, but we want to paint the whole gun solid black now. It's important we do this after we do the dry brushing because you don't want any of them highlights, any details picking off on the gun. It wants to be as dark as possible to give the biggest contrast possible from the lights of the glow to the darks of the gun. Just while I'm doing this actually, it's been a pretty good time to say cheers for tuning into the video. I mean, it's first attempt at anything like this and bound to have loads of mistakes to be honest. It's so weird hearing yourself on camera, definitely. I mean, if you think I can improve anywhere, definitely say in the comments because I'm sure there's plenty of places I need help on. And I mean, if you like what you see and you think you'd like to say thanks somehow, then why don't you sort me out of a cup of tea or something? I mean, I've got a link in the description just if you want to say, nice work, Paul. That was helpful. Cheers. And then it would definitely be appreciated. And I'm sure if anyone does uh, support, I'll personally say thank you to every single one of you all. Talking of people supporting me, actually, just want to do a quick shout out to all the people on Reddit specifically who private messaged me asking me to do a video. I mean, I was never going to do any of this until you guys twisted my arm, so thank you very especially to Vidsin, I guess his name is. I mean, he's the guy, he actually showed me how to actually make this video in the first place, all the editing side of things. So I appreciate all you guys down there who helped me out and convinced me to do this because. I'm actually quite enjoying it. I'll definitely do more because I've got plenty more I want to show. Okay, now we're getting interested. I mean, you will need an airbrush for this. 
they're not the cheapest things in the world, but you don't need one of those high end, like seven grand sorts of things. Mine's a Sotar 2020 by Badger. I mean, as you can see, it gets a lot of use. That's why it's splattered coming paint, but as long as you keep the inside clean, you don't ever really have any problems with them. The rumours are a lot scarier, but that's mostly because people aren't looking after them properly. I mean, I'm actually an airbrush artist as a, my day job, so I spend a lot of hours airbrushing, and mine, they rarely go. Occasionally you get the odd clog, but as long as you look after them, they're really not as scary as they want to be. I mean, that's not the cheapest one in the world, I think it's about £120, but it also came with a Badger Patriot, which is what my other airbrush is. Although this one is an Extreme Patriot, it's a little bit higher end than the normal Patriot, but again, I use this day in, day out really. Maintain it, keep it clean on the inside, and you shouldn't really go wrong. I'm going to be making another video soon, just how to use an airbrush. I mean, I'm going to be all about cleaning it, setting it up, what to look for. You see there, I've got quick releases on mine, they don't come with that, but they're so helpful to have. But it should be enough just to take the fear out of the airbrushing. So I've got white on my airbrush to start with. This again is my Patriot, and then really thin solvent white I'm using, but that's just because I only like having solvent in this airbrush. So, really thin, nicely watered down paint. I say watered down, thinned paint. It's about the consistency of milk, skim milk, say. And then you just really gently, just slowly highlight in those white orbs. Don't want to be strong, you don't want to be putting too much paint on, just real gently, real steady, just take your time, make sure you're aiming where you need to aim because you only get one shot with these sorts of things. Hence why we do the gun black, really. It gives you room to neaten things up. You see I've got a bit of tip dry there. That always comes from if you're spraying a lot of air through without pulling the trigger back, then you'll always get paint dry on the end of the needle. All you do is pick it off and then you should be good to go again. So real gently, real carefully aim, go for those eye sockets. You can see there's hardly any paint coming out of that. It's all air. I think I'm probably spraying about 95% air, 5% paint. Just ever so slightly, passing the air through, hardly any paint. Again, because I'm running so much air through it, it just keeps drying on the tip, just pick it off again. And then what you should do as well, it always helps is just to double check it is spraying clear if you do a little puff of paint like that big full throttle it should clear out any bits of paint that are drying on the tip and then as you can see there you're back again painting so now we've got our light sources mapped out it's time to tint them the exact colors we want i mean today we're going to go with gaming red it's a transparent paint from Vallejo and you can use it straight out of the pot, I mean, as it says on the bottom, it's ink, it's already thinned, you don't need to thin it anymore, just straight out of the pot, straight in your airbrush and because it's a transparent ink you can spray it over the black and, and the white and you should tint the white red but be hardly noticeable on the black. I mean, if you look at it through a fine tooth comb you will see it will turn the black slightly red but that's the effect because it just gives you a bigger fall off of the glow from the light so it works in your favour really it just gives you a smoother blend between the two nice and gently just tint those white areas red not going heavy at all nice and thin coats you can see my trigger there in the top right hand corner I'm not even pulling the trigger back just these airbrushes work down for air pull back for paint so as you can see I'm literally just bouncing the trigger up and down hardly pulling it back at all same in that chest area, you can see my finger just in the top right, not pulling it back. You do have to be a lot more careful on the chest and eyes obviously because it's not over the black, it's over the silver, it will stain all that silver red, so be very careful where you aim on the eyes and the chest. You don't have to have a bright red head at the end of the day. Again, nice and gentle, we're not going too heavy, we're not going strong at all. Just literally blending the black into the red. Okay, now we need to bring these light sources back because obviously they're a ball, they're going to be lighter than the glow. So, we've got some white there. I think it's 
I'm using an acrylic white. I'm not using any specific brand really. I find the Games Workshop, well, Citadel whites, I find them something about them that just don't seem to work that great. So I'm actually using, I think it's a Winsor & Newton acrylic white. And then I've got a fine brush there. I think it's a size 2-0 or 0-2. Quite the fine tip one. And then going straight onto those orbs, just really picking out where the light source is coming from. Same on the gun, that little orb there. Just not trying to colour the whole thing in, I'm not bothered about going around the back or anything, but just like get a nice round circle onto the orbs. And then once again, going into the eyes now, really careful of the eyes because if you smudge it all up onto the uh, what's it called? forehead or around the eye socket, it's going to be noticeable. Spin the model around to be comfortable, there's no point making things hard for yourself. If, it's, if you're easier working from the right hand side, just spin the model. You don't have to make things hard for yourself, definitely not. Especially when you're going detailed, you'll have a much better result if you just make it as easy as possible for yourself. And then, we're going to highlight that symbol on the chest. I can't remember what it's called, it's, it's got a name. I've not a clue what it is off the top of my head, but real gently just dabbing the paint on. We're not brushing it in, we're not wiping across it. Ever so gently just catching the edges of that just to bring the highlights. Be real, take your time, just be delicate. Now this I'd say is probably the hardest bit on the whole paint job. You want to go all those edges that are facing them orbs, the real close ones. You just want to pick off those edges with that white again. So hold the model as comfortable as you can. Only move the directions that you're most comfortable with. For example, you see here at the bottom right hand corner. To me, where I'm positioned, that's the easiest movement I can make. So pick off those vertical edges, those bottom right hand corners. Not, not got much paint on my brush at all, just delicately picking off those easy angles. Then around on the X there as well. We'll get some more paint, reload the brush up, twisting it as I'm going through the paint just to keep making sure there's a fine tip on the brush. And you see, spin the model around, so spin it around and do the exact motion again. I'm not going to be a hero, I'm not going to try and go all the way around it because it'll always end in tears. Just do what you find easiest and make the model work for you. It's the best thing I can suggest with this. Take your time, nice and steady, just work your way around. Now we come back out with the airbrush again, this time with green stuff well, fluorescent red. You can see here that's nice and thin, it comes like paste out of the bottle, really thick. So thin it plenty so it looks like the consistency of like skimmed milk again as I said earlier. Just show you those connections work there. Now because we have thinned it so much, you need to be really careful when applying this down now. Also, you need to remember you don't have that safety net of it being a transparent paint. This is an opaque paint, so if you do get it onto areas where you don't want, it's going to be quite noticeable this time compared to when it was just the ink. So, really carefully go even lighter than you did the first time around because this will be so runny, this paint, that it will take so many layers to build up. But if you build it up in one layer, it will just run everywhere and be a nightmare. So, take your time very very fine layers I mean you probably didn't even see that going on it's that fine but it was going on there somewhere just need to trust in the process slowly build up those layers over time and eventually the colour will come through and you'll thank yourself a lot more for it if you just take your time build those layers ever so gently
and final layer on the glow now. We just want to get go back with that white. This time, put even less on, just in the center of those orbs. Obviously, it's a heat source, it's a light source, so the center is going to be white hot. So just tiny dabs, just in the center of those orbs. Don't need to color the whole orb in. Just right core. Personally, I wouldn't bother doing any just on the eyes because they'd be such a less powerful source than the orbs in the gun. So they just would never be glowing as hot. So, and we finally, one last step, get the cryptic armor shade back out and just darken all those overspray areas and neaten up all them glows. You see now I'm blocking in the forehead, giving him his frown back. Because think of it logically. His eyes have been like a, his eye socket has been a bucket. There's no way he'd be lighting up the outside of his bucket, also known as his forehead, and this model particularly. So we go under his cheeks, his, his temples, across his forehead. Just reapply all that cryptic armor shade to darken those areas, and then it will bring the focus back to the cores of his eyes, and it will shape his eyes without being noticeable. Really, it will just. It'll make your airbrushing look so much neater and add shadow. Then it'll just make it all better, really. So there you go. You made it to the end of the video listening to my Fenboy accent. If you skipped a part to the glow part but you liked what you see and want to show support somehow, there's a link in my bio if you just want to sort me out of a cup of tea or something just to say. Awesome Paul, that's a really helpful video that mate, if not, that's totally fine by me as well, I don't mind. As I say, it's the first video I've ever done so I'm bound to make loads of mistakes, so if you've got any ideas of anything I can improve on, anything you like, disliked, just let me know in the comments because I'm going to read them all because on the future videos I've got plenty to improve on. You can see there, I'm going to be doing a green glow neck one video next, that's my next plan. It was the original one that I uploaded to YouTube but I thought to be something a little bit different, I thought I'd get the red foot one out of the way first. So, thanks again for watching. I've been Paul, and I hope you enjoyed it.